You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's version of the Weekly Business Hour. I'm Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the show. And I personally want to welcome you and thank you for listening today live, or if you're listening to our podcast at a later time, thank you for taking the time to listen to the Weekly Business Hour. I've got a great show lined up for you this week. We're going to start off with my personal thought for the week. Are you open for business? Special guest, Luke Foltz, Vice President of Buyer Accounts for the Kane Team at Keller Williams. Also joining us in the expert corner, we have Dick Hendy back, President of Horizon Associates and Inc. will join us in the expert corner. And I'll close out today's show with the Silver Fox Tip of the Week, getting it right. So I encourage you, sit back, grab your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we talk about business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. Before we get started, there is one little piece of housekeeping I want to take care of. Be sure that you have my email address, rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. I'd love to hear from you if you're listening to the show, uh, comments about the show itself, questions about some of the conversation that we've had, or if you have a question about your own business, I'd be glad to field that question and get you an answer right back. So rick at IRLoneStar.com. Well, our thought for the week, are you open for business? And that's a question to everyone who listens to this week's weekly business hour. Does your business convey to a potential customer, client, that you're open for business? How many times have you personally gone looking for something, looking for a particular business, and you drive down the street, a little shopping center or maybe a freestanding building, and you drive up, it's the middle of the day, and you look and you say, are they really open? Don't see any cars around, maybe see a light on inside and then, well, I don't want to look foolish and go up to the door and shake it. So I'm just going to keep driving perhaps down the street to a competitor or perhaps say, well, I'll come back when I can. That's happened to all of us, I suggest. And there's really no reason for that to happen. Your business, whether it's online or on Main Street, needs to say that it's open when you're open. Obviously, you can simplify it by putting a simple open sign in the window. And don't forget to turn it off when you leave in the evening. How many of those I've seen on it 10, 11 o'clock at night? But it's very important that everything about your business invites people in. All your marketing materials, advertising, whatever it is. Even the stuff you post in your front window. It's so funny. I see people tape things in the window of their store, and it really doesn't say they're open. It doesn't really invite me in. It's just something that was slapped up on the window, kind of crooked, rumpled. Maybe somebody dropped off something to put in the window about an event coming up. Make sure everything about the front of your business, again, whether you're online, that home page on your website, it's important that it conveys that you're open and people are invited in. I'll take a little analogy here. The old expression, the early bird gets the worm let me suggest to you that the open business gets the worm. Opportunity success right here in front of you, so grab them. The weekly business hours where Montgomery County and business throughout the world comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. Quick reminder, We're on Facebook, so please like our Facebook page, The Weekly Business Hour. That way you will have opportunity to access, if you set the alert, each week when the podcast is posted on Wednesday, it will alert you a new podcast is up. And if you go to the podcast, you'll see that we're putting the topics that we discuss. So if a topic looks good to you, then you can listen to the broadcast. Well, we have a great business guest here with us today. We're going to talk about community involvement You know, if you've listened to the show for the past few years, I always feel that community and talk in a very positive way that every business should have some community involvement. The community needs to identify your business with some of the quote unquote giving back, some of the caring about what's happening in the community. And it's a great thing to do. Well, this particular individual has gone really beyond that. It's a pretty amazing program that he's put together, fairly simple, but I think it's going to be tremendously effective. 
Our guest today, as I mentioned earlier, is Luke Voltz, Vice President of Buyer Accounts for the Kane Team at Keller Williams. Luke, welcome to the show. Well, hello, and thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate you coming in. You've got a, a wonderful idea that I want to get to, but let's start off and learn a little bit about you. What is your current position as the Vice President of Buyer Accounts? Well, yes, sir. So as most of your listeners probably know, um, I am a real estate agent and I work on the Kane team with Gail Kane. I'm sure a lot of people know who she is and she's pretty active in the community. But like my title says, I'm the VP of buyer accounts. So any buyer clients that we have come in buying real estate, I take care of them from the start to the finish. So you get everybody that's looking to buy. Absolutely. That's interesting. Now, do you hand those off to other agents? Are you the filter or are you the actual one that handles them? I'm the actual one that handles the, the buyer clients. Gail handles the seller clients. And the reason we have it structured that way is because uh, not only for efficiency, but um, to make sure that they have world-class service. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're in an extremely competitive business, in my opinion. How does your team or how do you stand out in that market? One thing that's unique about our team is, first off, we do have a, a complete buyer side, such as myself. Gail hand, handles all the seller side things. So we can really offer world-class service to each side. There's no intermingling. Um, and we also have a full team. We have a, a full-time assistant that takes care of all the back work, little things that we don't have to necessarily spend all of our time to make sure that our clients are taken care of doing. It sounds like the days of just being a, a single uh, real estate agent on your own, which I personally was a real estate agent back in college. Uh, it was an interesting job when you're going to school, but we did everything from mm -hmm. A to Z. Now it's split up. How does that help the potential buyer or seller? It keeps communication open. Um, since there's two sides, um, it's a little bit easier to get a hold of us, and we keep that communication line open. Sometimes when it's a single agent, you got to juggle so many things that you really can't focus 100% and, and actually provide that world-class service that you really want to provide and you intend to provide. Just sometimes you get overwhelmed maybe when you're a single agent. Well, Luke, share with us, if you will, a little bit of your business background, which uh, what brought you up to uh, where you are today in the real estate business. Tell us a little bit. Sure. So um, my previous background is in law enforcement. Uh, that's what I did bef before I moved down to Texas. been in Texas about four years. Um, had an unfortunate running accident, which took me out of law enforcement. So came down here, fell in love with the people in the place. Um, I've always loved real estate, so it was the perfect excuse to make that transition. Well, that's interesting. You really didn't have any preconceived notion. It was just sort of you put it out there and you look for something and real estate just was the one to go with. Well, to tell you the truth, I've always liked real estate. I've just never liked the idea of not knowing exactly what's going to take place or, so to say, working for commission to commission. I liked the security and stability of knowing I'm working this many hours and this is going to happen. That's interesting. Let me ask you this, though. You, you absolutely, when you've got your business and like any mis business, You've got to be disciplined. And a lot of us, and I'll even hold my hand up on occasion, we get we lack that discipline and we sort of fall back. We're not on top of things. What do you do personally to make sure you're disciplined on a day-to-day -day basis, performing at the top level? Well, a lot of credit goes out to my business partner, Gail Kane. She's a, she's a workhorse, so to say. She makes sure that uh, we stay focused and we have goals that we need to hit and we make sure that we do that. Um, Another thing that keeps me focused and disciplined is I always ask myself what my big why is. So that tends to put me back on track. If I'm ever veering off, I stop, go over my goals, ask myself why I started, and then I'm back on track. Let's stop and talk about that for a minute. You mentioned that Gail is the leader of the team, keeps you uh, focused or the entire team focused on their goals. Do you all actually sit down from time to time and put some goals together? and then measure or be accountable for those goals? Absolutely, we track everything that we do. Um, our goals are, are written down, our, our big goals, big business plan goals er, at the first of every year, and then we tend to go over them every quarter. If not every quarter, it's it's a lot more than that. So when the idea of being it, as you get towards the end of the year, you're not just picking it back up from the first of the year and say, whoops, didn't right. quite make it, or gosh, we passed that three months ago. Exactly. And, you know, goals change. I mean, the same goals you have at the beginning of the year, you know, they sometimes transition to be different at the end of the year. Well, let me ask you a kind of an off-the-cuff uh, question. How's the real estate market, the residential market here in the Montgomery County area right now? It is booming. I will tell you, there's not one buyer client that I'm showing right now putting in offers that we have 
I mean, we're going up against multiple offers on every single home. So it's a seller's market then. Absolutely. That's interesting. What is the most difficult part of your business? I mean, everybody has the the thing that just really on a day-to-day basis is somewhat of a challenge. What is the most challenging thing in your business day-to-day? I would say the hardest thing is finding the clients, getting out in front of people, making sure, making sure your sales pipeline's always full. Is it hard to find clients? I mean, I've always wondered, I mean, real estate, when I did it 30 plus years ago, was based on referrals. How do you get clients today? So Gail um, has been, I mean, she's created a wonderful business that is based off a lot of referrals. Now, as far as me coming into the picture, I didn't grow up here. I haven't been here as long as her. I haven't been plugged into the community kind of like she is. Um, so I, I have to go out there and, and actually prospect a lot. And that is primarily done through what? Networking? Networking, word of mouth, um, advertising on social media sites, things like that. So you have the full range of marketing because you're advertising, you're networking, you're doing it all. I'm trying. <laughs> I hear you. Any tips for those listening as far as networking? That's a hot topic in business. Be consistent. Be consistent. Don't just pop in and, and go from time to time. Be there. People will recognize your face and they'll be more comfortable with doing business with you. Yeah, and I also think personally on that, that they not only recognize your face, but it's easier for them to re- remember you when they have an opportunity to pass a referral on. Absolutely. Yes, There's you no got to about gotta make sure you're in front of them. Yeah, you got to be in front of them all the time. And I like that consistency. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of our first uh, segment today. And I hope you'll stay with us because when we come back, we're going to talk to Luke about community involvement. And that's really what he and I are here to talk about today. And it's a program that he's put together called Texas Heroes. So I encourage you to stick with us. We'll be right back. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. Attention movie lovers, The Ticket Stub is a new radio show servicing Montgomery County that is meant for you. The Ticket Stub is available live every Thursday at noon on FM 104.5 and 106.1, as well as anytime on IRLoneStar.com. Connor and Dick will let you know what's coming out in the theater, what is worth streaming, and what's going on in the world of film. The Ticket Stub, your home for movie talk. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the Weekly Business Hour. We've been having a great conversation with Mr. Luke Voltz, who works on the Kane team at Keller Williams. And one of the things that uh, Luke does that's a little different, uh, I think, uh, and I really applaud him, is really getting deeply involved in the community. And we're going to talk about his program. But before I do, I want to remind you that you and your company, if you're listening and you're here locally, can sponsor the weekly business hour. Uh, we're always looking for new sponsors for the program. Just email me at rick at irlonestar.com and I'll talk to you about being a sponsor for the program. Well, Luke, we're here to really talk about community involvement. And I was drawn by your program when I read through it, uh, being something a little bit different than I'd come across in the past. And I thought it'd be great to have you come in and talk about it. Um, why have you made community involvement a really a key piece of your business? Because I believe to have a successful business, you have to be a part of the community. You have to give back in order to receive. What about visibility? Does this help you be more visible in the community? Absolutely. That's, that's like I said before, consistent. Got to be consistent and why not, you know, be involved in the community, be out there. Because your involvement with Texas Heroes, and I guess we ought to kind of go through, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself go through it though, but it's every day. So you've got visibility every day with Texas Heroes. Yes. So just to give you kind of a background on Texas Heroes, um, I'm an ex-law enforcement officer that had an injury. They had to come out of law enforcement, had no plans to get out of law enforcement. Um, Change of career, which has been the best thing in my life. I just want to throw that out there. Um, But I always try and think of a way to give back towards certain demographics. And in this case, law enforcement, EMS, firefighters, and military. And I thought, okay, how can I give back 
to those people with what I'm doing now. And I thought, oh, I can do some sort of a program. So what I did is I developed this program called the Texas Heroes Real Estate Program. And what it is, whether somebody's buying or selling real estate, they can get plugged into the program. And I have program partners, such as myself with the Kane team that handles the real estate side, buying or selling. We have a preferred lender, Ross Flurry with Network Financial, a, a preferred title company, Kathy Deaton, Fidelity National Title here in Conroe, and then an insurance partner, Charles Dickey with Goose, Goosehead Insurance. And what we've done is once a client gets plugged into the program, we've all discounted our services in a certain way. We give back towards uh, charitable donations. And of course we do events for the client. Now, let me ask you, who's eligible to participate in this program? Anybody who's active or retired in any of those demographics or married to somebody in those demographics. So again, those are police on um, what other ones? Law enforcement, firefighting, EMS, so paramedics, things like that, and then military. And they can come to you and then get involved in the program and receive discounts uh, potentially on the services that they use. Absolutely, yes. Uh, reduced uh, commissions, reduced fees. Um, some things are purchased for the client. We do donations in their name and then just promote them. Let's talk about some of the events. You've got an event coming up that you were sharing with me prior to going on the air that I found very interesting. You do events in order to raise money, in order to help people. So it's not just discounting your services. It's also carrying in another step further and trying to do some things. So tell us about an event you got coming up, in fact, later this week. Absolutely. On uh, July 19th, Wednesday, um, the Texas Heroes Real Estate Program is partnering with the Woodlands Young Entrepreneur Network to bring vets and pets. The event's actually going to start at two different times. Uh, uh, Texas Heroes is actually going to bring in Gulf Coast Blood Center and do a blood drive at Whole Foods on Hughes Landing down the Woodlands. That's going to start at 3 o'clock. So if you're interested in Texas Heroes, if you need some more information, we're going to have a booth there, and you can give blood at the same time. Whole Foods is also going to give uh, light snacks and drinks to anybody who uh, donates blood. And then the actual event is going to start at 7 p.m., and that's going to be on the Del Frisco's patio. And what we've done at this part of the event is we're going to bring in off-leash canine, which trains therapy dogs for veterans and, and such. And we're going to raise money to actually donate a therapy dog to a local veteran. Let me ask you if you know, how much does a the therapy dog cost? So it's just over about $800 for the training plus the dog. Okay. And so depending on where you get your dog from, whether you purchase the dog or you're able to get a good dog, that's you know, maybe a, you know, a donation or something like that. So, but just the training's around 800. Well, this sounds like a great opportunity for anyone in the community to get involved a little bit uh, in an event, a great location, Del Frisco Steakhouse, wow. Absolutely, Del Frisco's has been a blessing uh, for the network. They're gonna be sponsoring some appetizers. Um, there is gonna be a $10 fee for anybody who is not a veteran. So just uh, keep that in mind, but come, like I said, the importance of business, if you're a business owner, which I'm sure most of you are who's listening to this station, is consistency and being in front of people. So there's gonna be some great networking opportunities at this event. Like I said, it's it, we're, we're partnering with the Woodlands Young Entrepreneur Network, which is nothing but business owners. Well, let me ask you this. You, you've absolutely, if, if you will, you've, you've, you dove in head first with Texas Heroes. Mm -hmm. It's an everyday type of community involvement, which you don't see a lot of those, but it's tied directly to your business. You've got business networking working for you. I mean, there's so many components what kind of feedback have you gotten from people as a result of being involved with Texas Heroes? I would say the biggest uh, feedback that's, that's been probably the biggest positive thing is there's no other person in real estate who's done something like this. There's other realtors that will discount or give commissions back, but nobody's actually set up a program that have all the critical components as actually program partners. So when you get plugged into this program, you've got the best of the best. Everybody's tested and tried to be the best that I've ever seen in the area. We're all local and we're, we, we communicate the best. So like I said, it's an actual program you get plugged into. It's not just somebody reducing their fees or giving you money back or giving you a gift card or something like that. Well, you know, the idea that if I'm buying a home, which doesn't take place very often for most of us, and the idea that you've kind of lined up everybody uh, you know, the, the lender, the title company, insurance, I mean, everything along the way, 
that makes it smooth. And I know every real estate agent that is is good at what they do have people they work with mm-hmm. in these areas. But in this case, you're tied together with really a nonprofit effort. Absolutely. And that's that's a one thing that's that's coming down the road pretty quickly is the Texas Heroes is actually going to have a nonprofit tied to it. Like I said, when I was in law enforcement, I was from a small department that didn't have a lot of money. My bulletproof vest that I wore every single day was six years expired. So if we could somehow build a nonprofit off of this group and be able to give back to maybe, you know, departments that don't have a lot of money to, to give them new equipment. So that way an officer doesn't have to go on the streets with a six-year-old expired bulletproof vest. That'd be fantastic. Well, it sounds like you guys have really revved it up. Well, let me ask you this. Is your involvement on a day-to-day basis, how much trouble is it for you to be involved in a community organization such as Texas Heroes? So what you're asking me well, is, is, is how much time special does it take? effort? Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like once it's in place, it just happens. It just takes the vision. It takes the vision and it takes the right people to get on board with you who see your vision and want you to succeed with it. I, I, it's not hard when, when you can make that happen, but that's the hardest part is finding the right people to build it with you, to build it with them. It, it's, it's not an I, it's an us. Right. And once it seems like it's organized, then it's simple to participate. Oh, absolutely. Of course, you know, your first few clients through, you got little things that you got to got to work on. But w- when you get the right people, it, it all goes really smooth. Well, what has been the feedback from your partners in this? They love it. Like I said, I, I've got the best partners I could ever ask for. They see the vision, they know where it's going and where we need to bring it, and they're on board with everything and give up their their free time to help me do everything with the program. Well, let me ask you, so you mentioned a little bit earlier uh, the future. You're looking to actually become a nonprofit and uh, get registered as such and get your tax uh, ID information. Where do you see the going from there? The, the sky and above. Um, like, like I said, I would, I would, since this program has got so much traction, it's taking off the way it is, to be able to start a nonprofit that's kind of a subset of this group would be fantastic. And that's interesting. And in, in the fact that you would absolutely have to get more people involved, I mean, once you do that, somebody's got to run the nonprofit and so on and so forth. Right, yes. And, and we're talking to new partners every single day as far as getting different benefits and things for the people that are part of the program. So it is growing every single day. The, but we, we do have the four critical components. So a title company, a real estate partnership, lending service, and insurance. Well, Texas Heroes, has anyone approached you about doing it in other cities or other states? Not yet. Uh, we do have some some big nonprofits that want to partner with us, though. So. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So you're drawing some attention to what you're doing. Yes. Well, share with us just as we kind of wind down here today, what does the future hold for you? I mean, you've got a job, you're in the real estate business, and uh, and same time, uh, directly connected at the hip, if you will, with Texas Heroes. What do you look for in the future in the next three to five years? Well, of course, uh, to keep doing real estate and to grow Texas Heroes to to not only just be limited right now to Montgomery County and surrounding areas, but really have other Texas Heroes partners in the entire state of Texas. So you look to spread this throughout the state of Texas? Absolutely. Well, you've got a great real estate network out there as far as realtors in major cities and towns. Uh, It should be easy enough to connect with them. Definitely. Well, let me ask you this. Has there been any downside for you uh, being a participant in this kind of community program? Absolutely not. Um, I don't see a downside in it at all, other than it just takes a lot of my free time. But I get a I get a benefit of giving back to to other people. And coming from a law enforcement background, I understand that uh, sometimes it's hard to be able to to deal with people. You just you get a different mindset, you know. Maybe when you're in law enforcement, so approaching a client who might be a police officer, I understand where they're coming from. I understand how they're going to act. I understand how they're going to talk that sometimes maybe another person may not feel very comfortable doing business with. So I understand what they're what they're seeing on a day-to-day basis. Well, that obviously would make a, a huge difference in you versus someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, great competitive advantage. Well, Luke, I can't thank you enough for taking time out to come in and talk to us really about not only yourself and what you've done, uh, transitioning from law enforcement, as you said, into real estate, but Texas Heroes. If people want to get in touch with you and ask or learn more about Texas Heroes or want to talk to you about real estate, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the quickest way is to either call or text me at 
235-1043, or you can email me at Luke Vols, that's L-U-K-E, V as in Victor, O-L, Z as in Zulu, at kw.com. And of course, you can find us on Facebook um, and follow us. That way you can see what events we're doing. You can come out and get involved and, and, and everything like that. It's a Texas Heroes Real Estate Program. Just search that on Facebook or on Instagram, and you'll find us right away. Well, thank you again for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to our bottom of the hour break. And when we come back, we've got one of our expert panel back with us, Dick Hendy, president of Horizon Associates, going to talk about the environment, the current environment, and small business lending. So I hope you'll stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, Montgomery County, it's me, C.C. Holmes. And I would personally like to take this time to invite you, that's right, you, to join me every Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 7 p.m. where I will bring you the very best, the very best of smooth jazz, classic jazz, and indeed, yes, the soulful sounds of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So come along and get jazzy with me, that's right, jazzy, <laughs> right here, of course, on Conroe's 104.5 and 106. 6.1 FM or worldwide at IRLongstar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on air personality talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor, contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776 if you are interested. This is Rick Schistler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the Weekly Business Hour. Welcome you back to our third segment in today's program, our Expert Corner. And I'm so pleased to tell you that Dick Hendy, president of Horizon Associates, Inc., is joining us today. Dick has 40-plus years in the lending business in the greater Houston area and brings a lot of experience to the table. Good morning, Dick. How are you? Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. I always enjoy my experience and, and sharing my experiences with your listeners. Well, I appreciate it. One thing uh, that our listeners need to know about Dick is Dick may have retired from the lending industry, but you stay on top of things. It's amazing uh, the kind of current information you have. And that's kind of what I'd like to talk about today, if we may, is what is the environment currently for small business lending? Um, I know that's a broad topic, got a lot, of, a lot of working pieces, but kind of give us an overview of can we borrow money to grow our business now? Yeah, I think the answer to that, uh, Rick, is yes. Um, all banks are looking for, for good loans. Uh, there was some legislation passed in 2008, 2009, as a result of the financial crisis we had in this country, and it was called a uh, Dodd-Frank. And some of those uh, uh, sections of that legislation made it really uh, cumbersome for banks. They had to keep uh, additional reserves. And a lot of that legislation is now in the process of being overturned. So I think you're going to see some uh, additional bank activity. They've got more capital to lend. Uh, banks do like uh, good loans uh, on the books, uh, but you have to prepare yourself uh, when you go in there and uh, make sure you pr present your best case uh, forward. Any any particular loans that tend to be uh, maybe a little easier to get today, uh, inventory, receivables, uh, you know, building a new building, buying the property, building the building, is there anything that's uh, that banks are really looking for today in the small business corner? Well, banks uh, like collateral, although they'll say that they're not collateral lenders. They say they're cash flow lenders. They like to have people demonstrate the ability to pay it back, but they also like hard assets. And uh, I've had most success recently with uh, trying to find uh, financing to expand your business, either through buying a new building or, or putting uh, new pieces of equipment. Um, the inventory buildup, uh, a lot of lenders don't like that because uh, inventory has got to turn into sales and, and uh, you know, they're not sure that that's always going to happen. And then receivables can uh, deteriorate pretty quickly. And so they like the, uh, the hard assets uh, probably more than anything else right now. 
Let me ask you a question. It's, it it kind of puzzles me today versus years ago. Uh, is the relationship with a banker? Uh, it seems like it's become more impersonal. I guess a lot of that is because of the, if you will, the automation of the banking processes. You know, the deposits. You have ATMs. You got all kinds of things. You don't ever see a face uh, of anyone, or there's no need. How important is it today to build a relationship with a banker so that in the future, when you need help, you need a loan, uh, they're more likely to do business with you? Well, Rick, you make a great point in that um, you're right. Today's business market, uh, a lot of people have become numbers, and uh, there's a lot of turnover, especially in the big banks, and they just uh, don't have time to build a relationship. And I always encourage my clients to go to a community bank and to get to know uh, somebody that's either on your Rotary Club or on your Lions Club or sits across from you in, in church that works in a community bank and invite them out to your business uh, and have them come out and see what you do and how you do it. When that person has to take a loan request to a loan committee, you're not there. And so the more educated that you can make your banker about your company and your situation, the better chances you are of uh, getting that big loan approved by a loan committee. And that guy's or gal has got to be your uh, your voice in that committee. So the more contact you can make with them and the more you can make their life easier and establish that relationship, I think the better off anybody's going to be in the long run. So you just answered my question. I guess relationship relationships are still important uh, as far as your banking resources. And that's good to hear because I was raised in an environment and grew up in businesses that your banking relationship was just like the relationship with your professionals, your attorney, your accountant. You spent some time building that relationship as an overall effort to grow your business. And I just wondered if things had gotten impersonal. I'm glad to see that they're not because that is an important thing to do. Let me ask you, when you go, exactly. to, when you go to a bank uh, to, to make a loan and assume you have that relationship what is the most important thing you can bring to the bank? I mean, I know you bring financials and all that, but what is the key thing if, if there is one or maybe there's several that a banker's looking at when they're thinking or talking to you about making that loan? Well, I think the, the, the best thing that you could do is to, is to prepare a well-thought-out, detailed business plan um, because they're going to take that business plan and give it to their person in the back office, the analyst, and that analyst may not have been involved with that meeting that you had with your banker, and they're going to read through that. And so I always tell my clients, you've got to paint your best picture, and you've got to do it in a thousand words or less. So uh, the clearer you can make that picture on what the money's going to be used for, how it's going to be paid back, how you differentiate yourself from your competition, and, uh, and a little bit about uh, you and uh, your ability to manage through crisis and manage through good times as well as bad times. Uh, a lot of you get one shot with that, with that banker on that deal. And so the better detailed business plan you can have, the better off you're going to be. You know, Dick, there's one thing that's always been in the back of my mind. Banking has gone through periods where there's been consolidation, uh, sometimes very rapidly. What's the environment out there today? Are banks fairly stable? Or is there going to be uh, the combinations taking place, the buying and selling? Uh, what, what exactly? I mean, I spend all this time investing in a relationship with a banker. And like you said earlier, there's a certain turnover, but particularly when banks merge. What's the environment now for banks? Well, I think a lot of the mergers uh, uh, have been done. And and a lot of the brick and mortar facilities that the bigger banks have put up, they're starting to realize, just to go back to that point that you made earlier, um, very few people go into banks anymore. A lot of it's done electronically and online. And, and so, um, a lot of the big merger consolidations are by the wayside. I think you're going to see more smaller community banks expanding, not necessarily from brick and mortar, but expanding in the types of services that they provide their customers and uh, trying to uh, make sure that, that they're meeting the needs of their customers as they continue to grow and prosper. Uh, but I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of big uh, mergers and consolidations. You will see some, but uh, not, and not as many as we have in the past. Well, that's good to hear. I guarantee you from a client point of view. One of the things also with banking 
that my clients talk about whenever we talk about their ability to bar and try to understand their capacity and what they may or may not do with it in the future is they complain today a lot about the fees. Uh, as you well know, banks uh, kind of went on a, on a, almost like a fee spree, if you will. <laughs> they just started slapping fees on everything and then raising those fees. It always seems from the client point of view or customer point of view, it's almost just at will. What's the future of the fees? Is that something that's uh, going to kind of slow down or will it be a change in direction for the banks? Well, I, 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 one of the reasons that there has been a lot of fees is that we've been living in a very low interest rate environment. And so uh, banks have overhead just like any business with facilities they have to operate and, and technology they have to put forward and employees they have to pay. And so when interest rates are at these historic low figures, there's not a whole lot of spread between what they have to pay their depositors to attract them to bank at their bank versus what they can earn on a, on a loan side. So the only way they can make that up is through fee transactions. And so, again, it goes back to that uh, relationship that you have. Uh, keep your uh, excess money on deposit with the bank. Establish that relationship. And uh, ask for those fees to be waived. Uh, they can only say no, but if you don't go in and ask for it, you're going to continue to get charged those fees. That's a great point. Well, in the few minutes we have left, I'd like to get your position because I know you stay up on our local economy uh, and we hear a lot about national economy and occasionally read something in the local press about what's going on. What do you see uh, as far as our economy here locally in the greater Houston area? And particularly, what do you see uh, the balance of this year and perhaps into 2018? Well, I've, I've got a, a lot of customers in a, a variety of businesses, and some of them are doing extremely well. They've had the best years they've ever had, and others are not struggling, but they're not uh, experiencing that big growth. But I think the nice thing about being involved in Houston, Texas, and is that we've got obviously a very friendly uh, uh, governmental body in the state that's friendly to businesses, and people are moving, still moving into Houston at a pretty good pace, not like we saw where we were gaining 250,000 people each year. We're down to maybe 60 or 70,000 people, but that's still an awful lot of people. And so I'm, I'm kind of uh, still very bullish on uh, the economy. I think there's some things uh, nationally that could slow that economy down. The oil prices have got to stay above $45. If they drop below there for a long period of time, that's going to hurt. We're still a little bit oil dependent here in the city. But I think there's some real positive um, things that could happen in Washington, tax breaks and health care reform, that if those get done, that'll just uh, add fuel to our already burning hot economy we have in the Texas market. Well, I, I tend to agree with everything you've said. I think it's a great time to be in business. I think it's a great time to uh, start a business. Any final words of wisdom from the lending or banking side of business to our small business listeners today? Well, I think one thing I would just, one final comment I would share is that most people um, think that like going to their bank is like going to their doctor. And uh, when you go to your doctor, your doctor's only going to be able to help you get better if you tell them everything that is wrong with you. And I think that's the same case with banks. Uh, go in there. Don't be afraid. They're there to help you. Uh, there's no such thing as a, a dumb question or a question that you can't answer. Just tell them no, and you'll get that information to them. But, uh, don't be fearful of your banker. They can be your very best friend. Well, I agree with you 100%. Dick, can't thank you enough for taking time to join us to get today and share that experience and wisdom that you have. If someone listening would like to get in touch with you to talk about financing, banking, what's going on in the current market, what's the best way for them to do it? Probably on my uh, cell phone, 281-217-4231. And um, I'd always be happy to help your listeners. You've got a great show, and I tune in as often as I can. Well, thank you, Dick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to our final break today. And when we come back, I will offer my Silver Fox tip of the week, getting it right. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com 
or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and Youth, and Family and Consumer Sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schistler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. I want to thank you for listening to the show today, and we're in our final segment, and this is where I try to to convey to you some words of wisdom, if you will, and some words of wisdom that are actionable, things that you could do, hopefully today even, that would make a difference in your business. I wrote a blog this past week entitled Getting It Right. How often do you get it right in your business? That's how I started off. You know, that's something that most of us probably don't think about it. But we're called on all the time to get the right answer. I mean, we make decisions all day long in our business. And each time we make a decision, there's an expectation by us or by those who work with us or those who do business with us, uh, on and on and on, that we get that decision right. Obviously, some decisions are small and inconsequential, but occasionally we make big decisions, and that's when it really shows up. And I'd like to submit to you today, as far as decision-making practice goes, that it is impossible to make the right decision every time. And the fact that we as business owners are called on to wear so many hats and make so many decisions, some of which we have very little background or knowledge experience with, makes it very difficult to make the right decision. And that's really what I want to spend a little bit of time talking about. What can we do about this? Because I see it as the dilemma. Yes, we're an entrepreneur. We're a small business. We've been in business 5, 10, 20 years, or we're starting out. And we know we have to make decisions. But, you know, there's certain decisions that we make, as I mentioned earlier, that we just aren't really able to do. We're not geared. We're not set. We don't have the information. We don't have the facts to make those decisions. And that potential for making a wrong decision And in the case of what I would call, quote, unquote, a big decision, those wrong decisions can be really painful to the business. So my first suggestion to you is to narrow down the areas where you really are called to make important decisions. And what I'm saying is pick the most important areas of your business. Stay on top of the current information in those areas. In other words, there are going to be certain areas where you really need to call in for some help. You may need a professional an attorney, an accountant, or someone else to help you make that major decision. But focus on important areas of your business and stay up, stay on top. That may entail reading. It may entail joining an association. It may entail having lunch with one of your vendors. Uh, You know, I found vendors in my business career to be very helpful. I mean, yes, they typically gossip about what was going on with a competitor, But what I really want to know is what was going on in the business out there in general and where their company, which typically their company was much larger than my company, typically their company was spread all over the United States or the world. Those are the people I want to talk to and get some insight from what their company thinks about the situation. So when I make a a critical decision, I've got some more information. The idea is to pick one area or pick the areas in your business that are important, and then use your strengths to understand those areas and be able to deal with them more effectively, but also work on your weaknesses and strengthen those weaknesses. We can't be everything to everybody all the time. It's impossible. Another area I think that's important is dealing with the information. Lord knows all of us are bombarded with so much information every day. 
and we've got to shut down on some of it. But the key thing, the key thing is determining through your own filter, if you will, what's important and to study that information, to absorb that information, to question that information. In other words, sort through all the information, all the resources that you have, and just focus on the ones that are important to you and your business. So make it a point to deal with the information. Don't just shuttle it, put it aside like I do sometimes when I receive a report on something and I'm interested in the field and I just don't take time to read it. Make time to read it if it's important to your business. Third thing I'd like to talk about that I think helps you in making better decisions and getting it right more often is networking. Again, this is the idea of building a system, if you will, of internal and external communication. And be sure you network with people. Now, it's not just joining a network group, but as people have mentioned before, you have a church, you have other institutions that you deal with. Network with the people in those institutions who are in a similar place as you are. Say all the small business people. Say the people are involved in the political community in your area. That's an important group to stay in touch with. Doesn't mean you have to invest a lot of time, but you need to connect and hopefully be a participant to the point that you're able to get information about what's going on and therefore use that information in a positive way for your business. But use networking. Be willing to share your issue in a networking environment and get feedback. I mean, let's face it, people in local networking groups are potentially your clients, your customers. And what better place in a more relaxed atmosphere than to get feedback? Say you have a new product or a new service that you want to bring to market. Why not test it out indirectly by talking to these people? Don't just make that decision in the back room when everybody's gone home for the day. Float it out there. See what people think. And you can do it in a casual way so that if you get an answer you don't like, it doesn't feel as bad as it might otherwise. Fourth thing I'd like to talk about in this area that I think will help you be a better decision maker and get it right more often is I think you need to step out on occasion and speak out. You need to be willing to speak before groups about an interest that you have, or particularly maybe your business, your industry, and given the chance to speak about it. I know that's an intimidating thing for many, many people, but I believe once I can speak about my business to three or more people in a setting where they're listening and I'm the speaker, then I think it enhances my ability to make better decisions. Not only do I hope I get feedback, but also the fact that I'm willing to step up and make those kind of remarks in a public environment, I think strengthens my ability as a business person and strengthens my ability to make the right decision. Getting it right is not easy, but it is something we can work on and therefore grow our businesses more successfully. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for taking the time to listen today. And please put a note on your calendar to join us again next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 a.m. And remember, you too can sponsor the Weekly Business Hour. Just reach out and contact me at rick at IRLoneStar.com for details. And don't forget, look for the podcast of today's show on the Weekly Business Hour page of IRLoneStar.com or on Facebook later in the week. And again, thank you for joining us. Remember to stay in touch with what's happening in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.